When we are born and we come into the world, we bring with us a push to complete. So we have everything in us that we need in order to be magnificent and to flourish. In the same way that the trees have everything they need in them to be magnificent. We're just coming to the end of autumn, aren't we? They've been just wonderful. So the trees have everything that they need in them uh, to be their particular kind of tree. And we have all the information in us that we need in order to be ourselves magnificently. But in order to get there, we have some life tasks to do. And the first one is to fulfill our basic needs. So, Pastor Boyden believes that when we are born, we have some needs that we have to have met. And the first one is to do with place. We need to know that we have a place in the world. We have a place in our parents' arms, in their gaze, in their minds. And if we have that, then we grow up confident that we have a place in the world when we are older. The second one is nurture. So we have a need for nurture, whether that is physical um, food or it's nurture in the form of love and affection and, and simple attention when we're little. Then we have a need for support. So as a small child, a baby falls down, they need to be picked up. And emotionally, when we fall down, we need to be picked up. We need that support physical and psychological. We need protection. So we need to know that we are safe, again, from physical harm and also from emotional harm. We need to be protected from some aspects of the world, things that can happen. And finally, we need loving limits. So I need to know where I end and somebody else begins, or where the world begins. And I need to know the limits of my capacity at any point. Obviously that changes as we get older, but if I overreach myself, I will, I will fall or I will get myself into some sort of difficulty. So limits help with that. The second point is integration of polarities. Being. Just a bit of a mouthful. So what, what that means is, in our formative history, as we are growing up, some aspects of ourselves are praised and encouraged out into the light. And we easily inhabit those aspects of ourselves as we grow older. Other aspects are discouraged and pushed into the shadows. And sometimes they just stay there. But in order to be who we truly are, as, as um, magnificent as we can be, we need all our aspects of ourselves. So one of the things Pastor Boyden does is to try to bring out those aspects that have been, not been allowed in our past, that have been pushed into the shadows. The third one is development of consciousness. or our awareness, if you like. So some of you earlier on were talking about um, feeling maybe a little bit lost or a little bit vulnerable at the moment. And as we, become, as we develop our consciousness around that, we also develop our ability to be present, our ability to be um, powerful, really, in the world. So our consciousness is important, and that's some of the work of Pesso Boyden. The fourth path is the development of what Professor Boyden calls our pilot. This is the adult part of us that makes decisions, is aware of the choices that we have. It's a sort of an executive function. It's kind of in the frontal lobe of the brain. So it's how we manage ourselves and our life and our, our world around us. Development of the pilot. And so in the Professor Boyden work, we're always in contact with the client's 
um, pilot, helping them to be empowered in the session as well as outside of it. And the last one is development of our uniqueness, uniqueness and potential. So this is about, am I on the right track? Uh, what's my journey through life? How can I bring myself as fully as I can to the world? So um, these are our life tasks. And if all goes well in our early years, we, met these, we meet these to a large degree, we have these met. But often things get in the way. Um, People with their human flaws and their own histories might, might stop some of it, or there might be a situation that develops or a trauma that um, stops us and wounds us. So uh, what Pestle Boyden does in this book um, is that it helps us to uh, work on these life tasks within the structure and then put it back in the past so that we experience these being done when we needed them back in our past. Um, and that way, healing our deepest wounds becomes possible, um, and then we can begin to grow into who we truly are. So those are the basic principles of Pesa Um I'm just wondering if there are any questions about any of any of that, or if you have any thoughts or responses. You don't need to. I'm just wondering. I have a question about um, number two, the integration of polarities. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that some parts are sort of moved away, and I'm wondering, um, you know, moved into the shadow. Um, if you can say a bit more, I'm a bit confused because I'm, I'm I guess what I'm thinking is um, some parts are desirable, mm -hmm. and some behaviors might not be. And mm -hmm. I mean, are you referring to that? Are you not? Am I? So what I'm thinking about is, um, so I, I was working with somebody the other day who is angry about a situation that uh, she's facing, but she will not allow herself to express any of that. She'll hardly allow herself to, to say it, to, to feel it even. Mm -hmm. So in, we were tracing that back and in her childhood that was an aspect of herself that was not allowed. The, the part of her that is nice and friendly and loving, that was very much in the light, but her anger was pushed into the, okay. into the shadows. So she is living a smaller life than she could be at the moment, and she wants to, to grow out of that. Okay. Does that make more sense? Yes, yeah. yeah. It does, that, there's, the, there's an expression of emotion that needs to happen at different points, and that isn't right or wrong, it's just an yes. expression of emotion. Yes. Um, it's a, Which, a part of us. It might, don't, it might not necessarily be expression of emotion as well. It could, it okay. could be something like um, our creativity. So for some people, their creativity was allowed to flourish, mm -hmm. and for some people, it was closed down for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's about parts of us, aspects of ourselves. Okay. Makes much more sense. Yeah. No, thank you. So it could be the same as being suppressed. It is the same as being suppressed, yeah. Suppressed, repressed, whatever. That, yeah, it's like a moving away from. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, with the first one, mm -hmm. um, is it the, is the idea that you <coughs> feel responsible for providing those for yourself, or is it that you still recognise you still need those as you get older? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, is that, that um, balance between being self-reliant and actually recognising what you need from yes. your yes. environment? So the idea is that as a, as a, uh, a small child, we need the, to have them met from the outside. We mm -hmm. can't do it for ourselves. But if we have that met physically and symbolically, then we can start to do it for ourselves. But the aim is not to make s purely self-contained, self-reliant people who don't need anybody else mm -hmm. in adult life. Um, because that's we, we are relational human beings. We, we are always in relationship. We, we always will need something from somebody, I suggest. Um, but when people don't get the early needs met, they, they can try to get them met in adulthood uh, in inappropriate ways. Right. Yeah. 
So um, we often see some of these needs, somebody trying to meet them in their marriage, for example, or in their relationship with somebody else, uh, trying to get them to do what they needed their parents to do um, originally. That, that's the idea behind that. Anything else?